Now let's get into my favorite part of the show. A little Q and A. Let me wear this banner. All right. Bicky reminds me, not financial, legal, or tax advice. The channel's for entertainment purposes only. Dan is not an expert, obviously, or a financial planner. These are just my opinions. That's it. Uh, what else we go? <laughs> Rand equals long Luna. Yeah, Rand lost a lot of money on Luna, but we all lost some money, right? Let's see. Uh, wait, what? Yes. No, no, no. I mean, I'm not doing DCA. J uh, James is doing it on his channel. And uh, same format. Remember, it's not good to get all your information from one person. I know I'm not the only person you guys watch, obviously. You got to get a lot of information to, you know, to form out your, your financial opinions about what you want to do. So that's it. <laughs> Rob is hunting Alex. No, not anybody. I got too much stuff to do. Hey, Corey, what's up with the wrenches? I'm busy. Yeah, we're we're looking to uh, sell one of our condos right now, as a matter of fact. So a lot of things are going on with that. Let's see. Ripple case. Yeah, Neil's got a good point. Ripple case is supposed to be done a year ago. It just didn't work out. That's how it goes. Uh Oh, no. Toby says, next, I'll just announce pulling out of the U.S. I hope everything's uh, solvent. That's all I can say. I mean, when BlackFi went down, people were saying next, is next. But who knows? I don't know. Cryptohead says, news is designed to shake you out or get you to FOMO in. This is a pretty good point, in all honesty. I mean, mostly on the mainstream, the lamestream media will do that. And that's about it. So... Like this channel, I just kind of give you like both sides of the same story, you know, and just kind of give you the data as best I can to go from there. I just like, I don't think that the bottom's in, but I could be wrong. I mean, how many times have I been wrong? So I just uh, play it safe. And that's what's really helped me out throughout time is to play it safe. Like if I had bought a property, say on some shaky ground, maybe I'd want to sell that property because I don't want to get sued. Stuff like that. And that's it. Light. Uh, <laughs> Sebastian says the Santa rally going to bite us hard in 2023. That's a good point, actually. The Santa rally, which I think is could potentially come in December, is where people are going to be like, see, Rob, that video sucked. And uh, now here we go forever. Maybe. I don't think we're going to keep going up. But rallies are confusing. To me, the rallies are great because I'm like, well, just going to take a little bit of profits here and sit on some cash because I know it's going to go down again. It's very simple. I don't think that we're going to have a Santa rally and it just keeps going up. Like we're going to see like Bitcoin at 25,000 on you know Christmas around that time. And then it goes to 30,000 in January and 32,000 in February or whatever. I don't think it's just going to keep going up. I think, I think we'll come down if history repeats itself. <laughs> Simon's great. I think you're talking about Simon Dixon. Oh, Simon Yu. Sorry. Simon's great. He looks like he's about 12 years old, but so smart. It's crazy, right? Simon Yu is 53 years old. I'm just kidding. He's a young guy. Uh, ah, good question. Julian says, hey, Rob, out of curiosity, is there a difference between Do News 1 and Do News 2 for Cardano staking? I've been staking on Do News 2 since the creation. Was running. Nope, there's absolutely no difference. It's uh, run by the same team, which is us. I don't do it. I'm not the technical guy, but I have a team that does it and they're doing a bang up job. I think we're almost hundred percent of time uh, for D news two and D news one. The only reason we did that is because we thought that um, there was going to be a saturation point and uh, we didn't. So like really both of our pools doesn't even equal one full pool, which is great. Nick says, Hey, Rob, you've been to the lab pack three and old San Juan. I don't know if I have, I've been down there a lot. So I'm not for sure. I don't know. Uh, tell me what it does, Nick. I don't, or what's there? <laughs> when I hear someone say FUD, all I can think of is George from Crypto or Crypto's R Us who says everything is FUD. Yeah, I got to tell you, I don't, like FUD to me was an ugly word back in the day. 
But now as we move forward, I think we should be talking more about, more about FUD as things come up. Because if it's not, not FUD, then you can, you can disprove it, right? So why wouldn't we bring it up that Binance is going to collapse tomorrow? Not that I am or not that it is. But let's just say that I heard that because there's, there's a solvency issue. Wouldn't I want to bring that to somebody's attention, such as yourself, who may have some crypto on that exchange so you can flesh it out and decide if that's right, right for you? I think the problem is too many people were too scared, myself included, of saying, of reporting on, on inaccuracies and winning a little bit too, too, too long for perfection. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to err on the side of caution from now on. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, I like George too. I like George's channel. I watch it every so often, but he's a little bit too positive about the space. Well, I think, I think the reason why George is positive, which and you have to be, I have to be honest with you. I know, like I come across as bearish, but I'm very positive about the space in the long run. I think George is just he puts it out there now because he just kind of sees it as like we're already in 2025, so. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, you know, and I think we all try to say the same thing, which is don't expect to be the Dogecoin millionaire tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Rob, your connection bad? My connection is bad. We have problems here in Puerto Rico. One of those is electricity. So sometimes my electricity goes out for a second. I'm just a little bit fixated. Yeah, it'll come back. Don't you worry. And if I'm pixelated, it's okay. You can still hear me. That's what's important. Ah, hey, Rob, what's your opinion on chain link stanking, staking? Uh, first of all, let me see here. Is that an offering that we have right now? That'll be the big question. Are they going to offer that? Let's see. Let me view all that. I am on a great website that you guys can all check out. It's called stakingrewards.com. What's beautiful about it, it tells you the rewards and the adjusted reward. What's an adjusted reward? Adjusted reward is what you get after inflation. So you can see right here, can I not do it so good at inflation? Hold on. Jerry Hall says hi. All right. Solana, 7%, but 1.59, eh. 3.6, 3.66 for Binance Chain. Interesting. Polka dots. So Chainlink, I don't believe is offering, but they will be offering. Uh, staking at some point. That'd be great because I have a lot of I have a lot of chain link. I'd love I'd love to stake it. That'd be fantastic. So yeah, so check out that that website, stakingrewards.com. Pretty great. Let's see. <laughs> when I want to get a reality check, I listen to Ben. No, we don't have solar panels looking into it though. What's your take on Theta? I still own Theta. I think it's gonna be big. They just launched, I think it was our 4.0 mainnet launch or something like that. And um I still have held on to it. Now I sold during the bull market because like I told you I would, I just didn't sell everything because I don't think we should sell everything. I think there's there's a little bit more juice in every, in some projects, we'll say. <laughs> Starlink, no, that stuff's expensive. What's well, a lot of chain link? A good amount. Old Bear is a new member. Congratulations. When Jarky, that's not a good question. No, that's a good point. Dr. Payne says, adjusting is a bit misleading. Both Cardano and Bitcoin are inflating for now. But the max is fixed versus ETH, which does not have a max. That's true, but it is pretty impressive that they are burning. And I'm not going to stake my Ethereum. I just don't want to do that. Um, what is it called? Sound money. What's the sound money? There's a website called ultrasound.money. And you can see right here. Let 
the fees. Here's the ETH supply. 200 year projection. Wow. It's, in 2023, it's supposed to go up. No, December 2022. And right here, it's supposed to go down because of, where's that metric? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right around here, it was actually deflationary, ETH supply. And this is when we went to proof of work to proof of stake, November 8th, roughly, right? Or a little bit, before, obviously, before that. So we were deflationary at this point. Now, of course, it's come up. And then you don't hear too much about this from the ETH maxis, but now it's up a little bit. However, I will say this. So it's plus 0.00157%, not bad. But if they would have kept on with proof of work, which some people said they should have because now they're looking at being a security, uh, you would have seen that. Shoo. It would have been a little bit more. No, it should have been a lot more. Ah, here we go. So the supply chains is 963,000, assuming proof of work. Sorry. This is the proof of work. You would have 963,000 supply change as opposed to, for proof of stake, only plus 2,000. So again, here we are. So yeah, I give them, I tip my hat to them. Looks like it's going to be a good thing, but they opened themselves up for, you know, litigation with the SEC. But that's what they had to do. So I'll take that. All right. Jayon Chow says, I think December 2023 will be the end of the bear market. I can see that. No historical data will ever beat against the Fed. Fed always wins. As long as the Fed hikes interest to 5 to 5.5%, nothing changes until stock crypto breaks. And remember, uh, the Fed every time has had to raise those rates to fight inflation to that level of inflation. So 5 to 5.5%, five let's hope that is the last one. But I don't think it is. And here's another thing. A lot of people say, well, they're going to slow down in December, which they said they're going to do. Um, but to me, I'm just like, oh, great. And they're going to keep raising just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit for all the way through 2023. And again, it's, it is weird timing. It is weird timing for... For this type and we can i mean for what's going to happen and we can see it right here you know the four-year cycles and these might not hold up but they've held up so far anyhow having all-time high dip reset right all-time high was 2013 next all-time high was 2017 then the next year you had a a dip and a big dump on uh, for the next year after that in 2019 and the same thing is holding true right now so let's just say that we get the Fed keeps their rates up, like just like the uh, St. Louis Fed head said, we're going to keep our rates. <laughs> I like that. The picture is like this. Uh, we're going to keep these rates uh, stretching to 2024. That's not good. I think we'll probably stay there all during 2023 and in 2024. How bad is that? So let's say they do 2020, 2023. We hit a recession, inflation starts going down. And at some point in 2024, they go, okay, fine. You know, we're going to pivot a little bit. We're going to take our foot off the gas. And guess what happens in 2024? A Bitcoin halving. And guess what usually happens after that? An all-time high. Does that mean we're definitely going to get it? No. But what? let's just say, and just like the examples we took a look at, let's just say that we don't get all-time highs. But we're able just to accumulate down here Again, this is 2015, isn't really. You can get Bitcoin 265 and then just keep going, keep going, then sell around 659. But the key is, the key to all this, the key to everything that we're talking about is that, how do I say this? Hmm, it's probably not a right way to say it. I'll say it. You can't fall into the trap of listening to, to everybody out there, which they're going to say, you know, you got to diamond hands. You got you to hold on forever because this is, this is going to a million. 
and it's going to happen. And uh, that's not what I'm going to do and not what I ever have done. I just don't get the point, right? So if I had not have sold, I couldn't have bought other assets, like pour into my Amazon business or pour into the sports facility or buy properties. It just wouldn't have worked. I would have watched everything go up and then, you know, crash down Bitcoin 72% and all its crash over 90%. Where's the, where's the fun in that? So I don't know, even if it doesn't work out and we, we, and we can keep accumulating at some point, bear markets don't last forever. Neither do bull markets. Just, we have to act at the right time. Uh, Beardy's here with his big, huge stash of EOS. <laughs> they're on, they're on Wilkes. Rob, if we could pitch like a 10 K or under, will you be tempted to get some of your real estate money to take advantage of that? Or you'd rather wait for cheaper real estate? Whew, great question. So the bigger upside is crypto. It always will be. Not always will be. I can't say like that. As time goes on, it might be a bigger upside. However, uh, there's the safer bets, which is real estate, because also it's a great tax incentives. This thing called depreciation works like a charm. And of course, you can put them very easy in the trust and they pass off to the kids and da da da. So for this one, we try to keep everything separate. Uh, the real estate accounts with the uh, sports facility account, with the Amazon business, and then with, uh, with crypto. So for me, I wouldn't flow other funds to, to do just crypto or just the real estate. So that's why we're looking to, uh, to sell uh, a property right now because – if you take a look at nationwide, there's a lot of places that are hurting as far as real estate goes, but there's some places that are just still at all time highs and people are buying like crazy. Austin, Texas being one of them and Puerto Rico, for whatever reason is still holding up quite well. So uh, here we go. So to answer your question, um, I will, I will be tempted, but I will not do it. I will stick with my plan. And my plan was created when I had a level head, not when I see all these prices going crazy. <laughs> Rob, if you got in 2021 and your portfolio is down 75%, would you still consider it taking profits? Now you take a look at it, this. Let's say that you bought, that's the great thing about dollar cost averaging. Your cost basis goes down as you keep buying. So let's just say that you bought Bitcoin at 1,000. Nah, that's a bad example. 2021, you probably bought it around hopefully 10 grand. Let me see, am I right here? I wasn't even close. Yeah, you didn't buy it. Let's say that you got, you bought it at 30,000. Let's just go with that. You bought it at 30,000, then you bought it at 40,000, then you bought it at 50,000, you stopped. And you didn't sell anything, right? Well, now, now that it's 17,000 or something like that, if you keep buying this, and then as it goes down the dip, and of course your, your cost basis goes down to maybe, Instead of being in that 40,000 range, maybe now you're below 30,000. Maybe you're at 26,000, just depending on how much you, you put into. So for me, you could sell some, but you have to take a look at your cost basis and go, where is my cost basis? How much did I pay for everything? And am I out of the money or am I in the money? Also, the thing you have to think about is this, tax loss harvesting. So we're getting to the end of the year, folks. So if you are thinking to yourself like, hmm, Maybe I should sell some and then take those losses and maybe buy right back, which is what I, exactly what I did with XRP. I, I sold all that stuff. I sold all the XRP I could. Whenever that SEC case, it's been so long. But then the great thing is that you get to buy it right back. That is called wash trading in traditional securities. And that is illegal. However, nobody knows what this is. No one can say it's a commodity or a security or a currency. So eh, no rules. And you can do that. In the United States, I don't know where else you are. So that's what I did. And uh, I locked in those losses, bought some XRP back, and now here we are. So that's what you gotta consider. And there's an app you can use. I don't, I don't have a link for it. I don't have an affiliate link. You have to find it. It's called Delta. 
And Delta, you can use an API integration and you can see your cost basis for all the cryptos that you buy. So it'll tell you, hey, look, genius, you're up 10% on Bitcoin. That's all I'll say. It's not going to tell you to sell or not. But you can look at that and go, hey, I'm up 10%. Maybe I want to take some profits at 5%. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to because, I don't know. I hate my wife and I don't want her to give her anything. I'm just kidding. I don't know what it is. Whatever your, your point is. So just use the use the technology around you. Green says, Rob, do you see yourself getting completely out of crypto? No. I don't think, and even in my in my last my last exit strategy, which if you look, there's a link in the description. Looks like this. If you scroll down uh, to strategies. Here's my DGEN plays. Here all, here's all my crypto exits, one I did in 2021. And here's my, my next crypto exit philosophy. But if you take a look here, let me show you. You'll notice that on these charts, it'll say I'm selling 80%. It's an 80-20 exit strategy. Meaning I sell 80%, I keep 20. Chainlink, I sell 80%, I keep 20. Bitcoin, Bitcoin actually was a little bit different. 80-20 Bitcoin strategy, it was 50% hold and 50% sell. I will be changing that to 80-20 again and go from there. So even if I keep 20% of my, of my Bitcoin, let's just say for giggles, that the, that the world reserve is now Bitcoin. Guess what? 20% of my Bitcoin will trump most millionaires and billionaires out there of what they actually possess and hold, guaranteed. So I'll be okay with selling 80% and uh, maybe it goes up or down. So no, to answer your question, not out of crypto completely. However, out of the YouTube game, probably. At some point, I will step down and you know, recommend some great people to watch and uh, get out of it. It's fun. It's good times. But, uh, you know... It, you have to at some point just say, yeah, time to move on. That's it. Of course. Of course, I read articles about people saying the same thing they never they never do. I have a massive stash of tomato. <laughs> uh, Beardy says I'm a Zillica man now and B Chain Maxi. Well, I've heard some good things. I don't know. I don't commingle my funds. I don't know why this is so difficult. If I can figure it out and I'm not uh, Gary's trying to shut me down yet again. Uh, average is down. Yes, exactly. TR, I will give you a wrench the next time I see you. Guaranteed. Uh, we're going to we're gonna have to stop this, this, this stream pretty soon. I'm getting a lot of uh, cutouts. Sorry. You should, get, you should get Victron Energy as a channel. That's a great idea, Becky. Why don't I do that? Fantastic. I, shall, I should also get uh, Starlink as a, as a sponsor. That'd be perfect. Crypto Golf has got a good point. It's better watch trade this year. First of all, it's tax loss harvesting, first and foremost. Then when you buy back, then it's watch trading before they close that loophole. It's a good point. It's a great point, actually. Oh, also, uh, I did partner up with uh, Coin Ledger, Coin Ledger, and they're a tax software. And I'm going to get uh, their crypto CPAs to come on the show and answer all your questions. So questions that I get a lot of is, hey, I lost all my all my crypto in Celsius, Voyager, FTX, BlockFi, take your pick. What do I do with that? Or, hey, I want to sell a bunch of crypto at the end of the year. How does that work? Or, hey, I got a bunch of rewards from staking. How do I quantify that? How do I put them in the taxes? So I'll have them here. You can answer all. They, they'll answer all your questions and we'll just do a big event. We'll do a couple of them just to make sure everybody gets it. Taxes scare the hell out of me. Uh, uh, let's see. 
Ah, Dr. Payne. But if you had a big gain early in the year, you can wipe it out by selling and repurchasing. Interesting, interesting. Mm. Hello, Mad Cow. Thanks for stopping by. Always here. Appreciate you. I appreciate everybody who stops by. It's very nice. Uh, yeah, CBDCs. <laughs> the normal CD you provide is desperately needed in the YouTube space. There's a lot of um, sensationalism. I'm quite uh, quite boring. That's usually how you make it, though. You're quite boring. Have you ever heard Warren Buffett give an interview? Not that I'm comparing myself to Warren Buffett, but as far as like energy level, it's about the same. It's super boring. But uh, I've been doing pretty well for quite some time. Uh, let's see. Carry a sack. Ugh. FTX. And I hope you understand I, I'm not going to cover the FTX story because it doesn't do much for us. <laughs> Let's see. I got to pay my bills. That's true. Electricity bills, water bills. What? Two years. TR just come back. Yeah, I just got to run a wire. That's all it is. Uh, yeah, I use Town Ledger myself. Works great. Merci. Pumped Up Gaming says, I was just able to get up to a quarter Bitcoin, about 60% of my portfolio. What do you think is a needed amount of Bitcoin? I think you're there. I think anything above 0 0.10 is pretty good, especially as time goes on. So, yeah, I think that's fine. But I got to tell you, I think... I think if this, you know, there's more pain to come, but I don't, and if you bought Bitcoin at 17K and it goes down to 10K, if you didn't, didn't dump everything into it, wouldn't it be just like, well, I, you know, I bought it up there a little bit too high, but 10K is all right. Buy a little bit and then wait for a couple of years. I guess so. Here's a good question. Well, there's two questions. What's the price of electricity in Puerto Rico? So, in Texas, it's like 13 cents per kilowatt hour. In Florida or uh, California, no, no, Hawaii, it's around 47 cents per kilowatt hour. And we are much higher than that. That's all I'll tell you. I don't know exactly the price, but I know it's higher than Hawaii. Uh, any word on Voyager is a time to give up? No, I think there's two bids coming in. One is through Binance and another one is through NX, NXS, INX, excuse me. And uh, they're both regulated or exchanges. So I don't think it's time to give up. I think... If anything's going to come out of bankruptcy and get bought out, it's uh, Voyager. Sure, Celsius as they drag their feet and use our money to to pay their salaries and their lawyers. Lavasi, is it safe to buy crypto now? You know. It's not financial advice for me. It's a safe time because I just follow the rules. What are those rules you say? Great question. So the rules are, is I don't invest more than I can afford to lose. The next one is everything is a scam until proven otherwise. The next one is I don't leave anything on exchanges. I put them in my, where'd ledger go? That's, oh, right here. And uh, no leverage, no leverage. If you wanna do one, you know, two X, three X, that's up to you. But 50 and 100 X, come on. And the last one is take profit. So I can't really answer your question is, is it's, is it ever safe to buy crypto or safe to buy crypto? But that's what I do to keep myself safe. Just follow my rules. I follow my rules. I made them, so I might as well. Ah, Garrett, who's your solar company? Because we're we've already got somebody who's uh, looking to looking to install the the panels and the uh, batteries. <laughs> Do I have to choose if I stay with James or Rob is my dad? No. This is what's great about YouTube. You can go to both places. It's going to be all right. JT, I know you got a wrench. You should have a wrench. Fred says, how many different cryptocurrencies are in your current long-term portfolio? Well, long-term portfolio is really just, just a couple. Um, 
remember, you know, I'm never going to sell 100% of them. So, I mean, Bitcoin is obviously the one. I can see Ethereum doing well for quite some time because everybody seems to want to build on it. doesn't matter if it's whatever problems, everybody's there. And that's, that's doesn't matter if you got an up and comer right now. That's what, that's what they're going to do for a while. Ah, and then, of course, Cardano. But another one that's a long-term hold for me is World Mobile Token. I do like that one. I'm also a, a World Mobile node operator. So I'll stick to that one for a while. Chainlink. I, again, I don't see if, if, you, if you need outside data, you need an Oracle. And what else is besides Chainlink? There's a couple, but does anybody use them? I'm not for sure if they use them at a massive degree as Chainlink is. Mm, I'm in it for the tech. <laughs> That's a good question. Hey, what happened to crypto that was on BlockFi, for example? Yeah, where does it all go? That's a big question. Let's see. I have no magic whatsoever. Okay. This is a great one. And I will leave it with this because we're coming up in the hour. So how would your thesis on Bitcoin change if the next halving did not bring a substantial price increase? So you got to remember, it's not the halving on that day, of course, that uh, gives you the massive price increase. It is over time as people, and the narrative, some people say, well, the narrative is because, you know, we understand now, or it gets into people's heads that there is a diminishing supply because of the halving. And some people say it has nothing to do with that. It's just the narrative itself that is being pushed, which brings people into to FOMO and pushes the price up and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, cause and effect, chicken and the egg, I don't really care. So for me, if let's just say, for example, that Bitcoin, it's at 17,000. Let's say it goes down to 10,000. Now, nah, let's just say 20,000 in March 2024 when the Bitcoin halving is. I just don't see it decreasing, especially with all the big names that are pushing it now that are getting into not just Bitcoin, but crypto. But I mean, I just don't see how that's possible. It could be possible. But if it didn't, then I would take a real hard look at what has actual use utility. Because if nobody's using Bitcoin for its intended purpose, which is, is it peer-to-peer -peer transactions like it was written in the white paper? Is it a store of value, which a lot of people talk about? Is it gold 2.0? What is it? Or is it, a, is it a base layer for everything to be built upon as the most secure network in the entire planet? If you don't use those four reasons and there's no utility for it and people aren't using it, they're just, saying, they're just all a bunch of speculators. Then, of course, I start to think of myself as like, well, what am I doing into Bitcoin? Then I would start to think about this. Which projects have real world utility and are actually helping people out and actually doing things? So in that, I have to take a look at the NFT range. All right. And some of this, and I just, of course, we just blipped out for a bit, but all I would take a look at what is real utility and start to invest in there. That's it. And another thing I'd really look at too is gaming because that is real world utility right now. And of course, world mobile token, you know, all stuff like that. And that's it. All right, everybody. So look, that concludes today for the new. Adiós.